Okay, so it's already my second vlog. Kaka-release ko lang ng vlog ko kanina about victim blaming. Actually, uh, I released my vlog kahapon pa. But, ayun nga, kasi ang daming nangyari. Napaulit-ulit yung ibang segment ko. Nagkulangot ako sa isang segment. Kaya, ay, kaya kanina ko lang siya officially pinapish. Anyway, so ngayon, si, uh, hapon, ang usapan natin ay victim blaming. Ngayon, yung topic natin ay why online classes are not effective. Well, let's start from the beginning. Anyways, ever since classes were suspended, ang dami na nagtatanong, ang dami ng concerns. Ano mangyayari sa trabaho natin? Ano mangyayari sa negosyo? Ano mangyayari sa pamahalan sa Pilipinas? Ano mangyayari sa ekonomiya sa Pilipinas? But yung major talaga na problema natin dito, lalo sa aming kabataan, ay ano mangyayari sa pag-aaral namin. Yung mga school kasi, nag-start sila mag-suspend around March 10 to March 15. Ngayon, nung nag-suspend sila, okay lang. Kasi one week lang na may suspension, walang problema. Nakahabol naman tayo dyan. Pero, habang patagal kasi ng patagal, parang hindi na siya maliit na problema. Kaya walang choice ng government ng Pilipinas kung hindi i-push yung suspension from one week to one month. Bakit nga ba naman kasi tayo nag resort sa enhanced community quarantine eh kung simula pa lang sana nag travel ba na, di ba? Kaya nga eh, wala eh. Kaya tayo makagawa. Yan yung gusto nila eh. Anyways guys, so yun nga yun ang nangyayari. Because of that enhanced community quarantine, schools are forced to conduct online classes. Student governments pled to their administration that online classes were not really effective. Some schools listened, some schools didn't. However, believe it or not, online classes are really not effective. Okay. I'll give you three reasons. First of all, online classes aren't something we're accustomed to do in the Philippines. So, hindi lang talaga ang mga estudyante ang mag-adjust, pati mga professor dito sa Pilipinas. I have this friend na yung subject nila ay Law 1, Obligations and Contracts. You can already tell that it's a bit of a challenging subject. Now, imagine that your subject is basic law, then your professor is at least a decade late for retirement. Ngayon, hindi ko minamaliit yung kakayahan ng tao. Ha? Don't get me wrong. I respect law professors. It's a really hard thing to do to teach students regarding the law. Pero kasi, you can only do so much. Can you imagine how hard it would be to conduct an online class as a 70-year-old teaching basic law to a bunch of students? Chaga guys, mahirap. Hindi lahat pare-pareho. Hindi lahat may gets ka agad. Hindi lahat makuha ka agad. Hindi lahat mapaperfect ka agad. I'm currently taking up financial management. We have a class for data warehousing. Tapos, akala ko ako lang hindi nakakaintindi. Kasi, kasi kakashift ko lang. Tapos, I already took up the second course without taking the first. Kasi yung first part niya, hindi siya in-season. So ngayon, nag-post yung professor namin ng module. Tapos, I tried I tried getting it. I tried understanding it. But I didn't. Ngayon, I thought I was the only one. But, it turns out, I'm not the only one. There are just some things talaga na you will have to learn by practicing it such as data warehouse, accounting, subjects related to the medical field. Kasi syempre, you won't just be practicing theories. Okay, second of all, it's anti-poor. Like, come on guys, kapag mag online classes tayo, kailangan natin lang at least two things. Access to devices, computers, laptops, tablets, iPads. And second of all, access to a stable internet connection. Hindi lahat may wifi, may PC, just because you're a Gen Z, hindi ibig sabihin meron ka nun. Para sa mga privileged na iniisip, lahat meron ganon, hindi lahat meron ganon. Kapag nag-push through ang online classes, ano mangyayari sa mga taong walang PC, walang internet connection? Madedelay. Ngayon, hahayaan nyo ba? Hahayaan pa ng school? Hahayaan na lang ba nating lahat na madedelay na lang yung mga tao? Siyempre hindi, di ba? Kasi dapat sama-sama tayo. Hindi mo pwedeng sisihin yung tao na wala siyang ganito, na wala siyang ganyan. Kasi, kasi kung pwede naman, gagawin niya Like, lockdown na tayo lahat. Siyempre, 
kaysa masayang yung oras, ang gagawin natin, mag-aaral tayo. Eh yun na, hindi nga lahat meron access sa mga kailangan, sa mga basics para makapag-aaral sa online classes kasi naka-lockdown tayo, lahat na suspension For those people who are blaming the students na wala silang access sa wifi or sa, sa PC or sa devices, are you going to quote Cynthia Villar and say, it's your fault for being poor? Yes, there are students na nag-participate sa online rambulan, sa bardagulan, pero hindi lahat ng estudyante nandun. You can't sanction the people, the students, na wala namang kinalaman sa mga ganun kasi wala naman sila access in the first place. So you can't tell people na lahat ng tao meron ng access sa online classes just because some students participated in bardagulan and school rambulans. Even online rambulans, online lambingan yung mga ganyan, hindi lahat ng tao may access sa ganyan. Last but definitely not the least, it's not safe. Why? It's already in the comforts of your home. In relation to what I said, to point two, not all students have the means to join online classes. So para sa mga estudyante na walang access sa PC, sa internet, anong gagawin nila? Lalabas sila, magko-computer shop sila, mag sila ng internet. O, oh, ano pang use ng enhanced community quarantine kung lalabas din lang naman para makapag-aral? Eh di sana hindi na nag-suspension, di ba? At least harap-harapan tayo nag-aaral. Kung lumabas pa sila, they're going to be exposed to the virus na simula sa pool pa lang naman, iniiwasan na natin. Kung mag-online classes, tapos gusto mo lahat ng estudyante nandun, they would have to leave their homes. They would have to be exposed to the coronavirus. If you still think otherwise, I urge you, please comment down below. Let's have a talk. Plug ko na rin po guys, that I am a part of a movement for the students that are stranded here in Baguio City. It's called Amid COVID. I'm leveling for a group. Uh, We're taking donations in kind and in cash para sa mga students na nawawala na ng supplies dito sa Baguio City. Please like and share na rin po yung Millennials Philippines. The Millennials Philippines has already gathered more than 500,000 pesos that will help not only frontliners but also those who are in need of relief goods. So please like and share. Please spread the word about Amid COVID and Millennials Philippines. Thank you. Anyways guys, that's all from me. Thank you for watching my vlog. Yung next vlog ko ay about financial planning. So please feel free to like and share.